Welcome everybody to our time of evening prayer today on Friday the 20th of November. Not quite from St Giles today but the no less grand diocesan offices here at Bangor. Today the church celebrates the feast day of St Edmund, King of the East Angles and Martyr. Born in about the year 840, Edmund was nominated as king while he was still a boy and he was crowned King of Norfolk in 855 and of Suffolk the following year. As king, he won the hearts of his subjects by his care of the poor and his steady suppression of wrongdoing. But when he was attacked by the Danes, he refused to give over his kingdom or to renounce his faith in Christ. He was tied to a tree, shot with arrows and finally beheaded on this day in the year 870. And so today the church celebrates St Edmund, King of the East Angles. So we begin with our prayers of preparation. O Lord, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. Now as darkness is falling, wash away our transgressions. Cleanse us by your refining fire and make us temples of your Holy Spirit. By the light of Christ, dispel the darkness of our hearts and make us ready to enter your kingdom, where songs of praise for ever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and to set us free to sing your praise now and for ever. Amen. The appointed psalm for this evening prayer is Psalm number 77. I cry aloud to God, I cry aloud to God and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. By night my hand is stretched out and does not tire. My soul refuses comfort. I think upon God and I groan, I ponder and my spirit faints. He will not let my eyelids close, I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old, I remember the years long past. I commune with my heart in the night, my spirit searches for understanding. Will the Lord cast us off for ever? Will he no more show us his favour? Has his loving mercy clean gone for ever? Has his promise come to an end for everyone? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he shut up his companion in displeasure? And I said, my grief is this, that the right hand of the Most High has lost its strength. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your works and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who worked wonders and declared your power among the people. With a mighty arm you redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed on every side. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the ground. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths in the great waters, but your footsteps were not known. You led your people like sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 10 to chapter 12 to the end. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. On that day the Lord will extend his hand yet a second time to recover the remnant that is left over of his people, from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Ethiopia, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hameth, and from the coastlands of the sea. He will raise a signal for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth, 
The jealousy of Ephraim shall depart, the hostility of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not be jealous of Judah, and Judah shall not be hostile towards Ephraim. But they shall swoop down on the backs of the Philistines in the west, together they shall plunder the people of the east. They shall put forth their hand against Edom and Moab, and the Ammonites shall obey them. And the Lord will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt. And he will wave his hand over the river with the scorching wind, and will split it into seven channels, and make a way to cross on foot. So there shall be a highway from Assyria for the remnant that is left of his people, as there was for Israel when they came up from the land of Egypt. You will say on that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away and you comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say on that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Here ends our first lesson and our canticle, A Song of God's Assembled. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. We have come before God's holy mountain to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. We have come before countless angels making festival, before the assembly of the firstborn citizens of heaven. We have come before God who is judge of all, before the spirits of the just made perfect. We have come before Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, so let us give thanks and offer to God acceptable worship, full of reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Our second lesson is of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 8, verses 23 to the end. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. A gale arose on the lake, so great that the boat was being swamped by the waters, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a dead calm. They were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? When he came to the other side, to the country of the Gadarenes, two demonics came out of the tombs and met him. They were so fierce that no one could pass that way, and suddenly they shouted, What have you to do with us, son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a large herd of swine was feeding at some distance from them, and the demons begged him, If you cast us out, send us out into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and entered the swine, and suddenly the whole herd rushed off down the steep bank into the lake and perished in the water. The swine herders ran off and on going into the city. They told the whole story about what had happened to the demonics. Then the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their neighbourhood. Here ends our second lesson and our responsory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. In the Magnificat. Those who gave up their lives for Christ and followed in the way, rejoice with God now and for ever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. 
He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Those who gave up their lives for Christ and followed in the way, rejoice with God now and for ever. And so we come to our time of intercession. Let us pray. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us make our prayer in the power of the Spirit, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith that with a noble fellowship of the prophets, we may discern the signs of your kingdom in our midst. We pray to you, O Lord, hear our prayer. That with the glorious company of the apostles, we may proclaim your gospel throughout the world. We pray to you, O Lord, hear our prayer. That with the white-robed army of martyrs, we may be ready to suffer for the truth's sake. We pray to you, O Lord, hear our prayer. That with all who are anointed by your Spirit, we may bring good news to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. We pray to you, O Lord, hear our prayer. That with the saints in light, we may bind up the brokenhearted and comfort all who mourn. We pray to you, O Lord, hear our prayer. That within the whole company of Christ's pilgrim people, we may come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. We pray to you, O Lord, hear our prayer. In communion with all the saints, let us commend the world to the mercy and protection of God. In our worldwide calendar of prayer today, we pray for the Diocese of San Diego and for Catherine their Bishop. We also pray for the Diocese of Durham in the Church of England and for Paul their Bishop. In our own diocesan calendar of prayer, we pray as always for our Bishop Gregory, for all his ministry for and among us. We continue to pray for Archdeacon Andy, Archdeacon of St Asaph. And we pray for Hugh Bryant, Mission Area Leader of the Dufferin Cloyd Mission Area. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we remember before you all those in need of our prayer at this time. For those known to us, those unknown to us, and those who have nobody to pray for them. We remember before you Colin and all people in nursing and residential homes, and for their families finding it difficult to see them at this time. We pray for Daniel and all those in prison, for all their family and friends, again unable to see their loved ones at this difficult time. We pray for Alan at HMP Berwyn and Jane at the Mylar Hospital, whose chaplaincy brings comfort to those in greatest need. We pray for those known to us who are sick at this time, remembering before you Luke and Emma, Louise, Sue, Richard, Tim, Derek, Iris, Joanne, and any others known to us that we name in our hearts now, Lord. We pray for those who are bereaved and for those faithfully departed. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. And our collect for today. Eternal God, whose servant Edmund kept faith to the end, both with you and with his people, and glorified you by his death. Grant us such steadfastness of faith that with a noble army of martyrs we may come to enjoy the fullness of the resurrection life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. And so let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.